Yeah. Meet us at this hour. Yeah, yeah, but that the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Meet us at this hour now. Quran Badege, they have your way in this service now. Have your way in this time. Lord, we pray that you step into every voice, every man's, every woman's matter. Lord, you step into every family's matter. You step, step into every marriage matter. Every particular matter of everyone right now. Step in. Step in now, Father. Step in now. Step in now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, step in and let this story be changed right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You're welcome to today's service. You're welcome to this meeting. You're welcome to this showers of this February series of showers of blessing. Missing to you from Anglican Church of Calvary, Saskatoon. In this province of Saskatchewan in Canada, wherever you're hearing us from, from within Saskatoon, outside Saskatoon, we bring you the mandate of God's word today. What is the mandate of God's word? The mandate of God's word, or the topic we're looking at today, is when Jesus sets in. When Jesus steps in. When Jesus steps in. When Jesus steps in, we're going to be reading from Luke chapter 7, verse 11. We'll start. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now, when he came there, to the gates of the city. Behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. And said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the, the bear. And they that bear him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. Now look at that. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. This is the word of God. Thank you. We are looking at when Jesus steps in. When Jesus steps into any man's matter. When Jesus steps into any case. There definitely must be a positive change. No, not like the change of some political parties, like my home country. Those who promise change and no, no, not like the, the change of any president. The, the promise of change of any president of any war, any, any 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 country of any the world. No, not the promise of the of change of any other person. No, when Jesus steps into any matter, hmm. There must be a positive change. When Jesus steps into any matter, you know what? When Jesus steps into any man's story, the story must change. Ha! Manda Lagada. Let's sing that song. Jesus story change yo. Jesus story change Come and change my story. My story today. Come and change my story. My story to the when Jesus steps into any man's story, the person's story must have a positive change. Not just a change, like I said in my home country. No, the change be there's promise us change, and the change become dangerous change. <laughs> change have claimed almost the economy and the whole nation. No, when Jesus steps in. There must be a positive change. When Jesus stepped into the case of Lazarus, 
What happened? A dead man came back alive. Now, what does that mean? In the place I just read in Luke chapter 7, verse 11 down, the Bible said, whenever the Bible talks, listen carefully. The Bible said that we were talking about a woman here. Number one, this woman was a widow. And this woman had only one son. And this son was dead. This woman was weeping because all of her hope was gone. People were there, crowd. The crowd of people there could not help her. Somebody, get it me. Crowd of people might be around you, but they cannot help you. The one that can help you is Jesus. As this message is going on, I employ you, I urge you, try and say, Jesus, come in. Say to Jesus, please step into my case. That's what he needs. Oh, in the book of Luke, I read Matthew, Luke, Matthew, Matthew, in the whole gospel, there were two lepers who came to Jesus. They say, they knelt down and said, Master, if you will, you can cleanse us, you can make us whole. If you will. Even in that same, in this, the same, in Matthew chapter 9, there was a man who came to Jesus. The Bible calls him the centurion. They didn't tell us the name. Said the centurion. He said, Master, my servant is sick at home. Speak a word. He came to Jesus. Make him. Now, we're going to go to the Bible very soon. But I want to build on this. When Jesus stepped into the case of that woman, who had only one son, a widow, a widow, and this man, some listening to us, it might be your husband, it might be your wife, it might be your son, it might be your daughter, it might be your father, it might be your mother, that is at the point of death now, as we're going to be seeing very soon. Or the person is already there and they are carrying the person out. Oh, I am not talking about myself. Forget about me. I am talking about Jesus, the Son of God, the maker of heaven and earth. That's what I'm talking about. The person I'm talking about. He said, the word, the word I'm preaching to you today, which is actually said, when Jesus steps in into your case, huh, your story must change for good. Call him. You don't need message of 20 hours for you to change. You don't need my prayer even. Do I will still pray for you? You don't need prayer of the biggest man of God on earth. No. What you need and who you need, what you need is for Jesus to step into your case. What who you need is Jesus to step into your case. And the showers of blessings of God will come upon you now. If the person was dead. If the person is dead now, the person will come back alive. If the person is sick, dead sick in the hospital, you are hearing me, the person will come healed. If that woman, the enemy have tied the womb that the woman cannot deliver, that woman, that baby will come forth now. If, if that womb has been tied that that womb cannot conceive, I don't care to know the number of years. Kai, listen to me, listen to me. Just say, Jesus, step into this, my case. Jesus is a specialist of handling ugly cases. Impossible cases. Cases that are, that, that are shapeless. Jesus is a specialist in handling them. Hey, in Mark chapter 10, Jesus talked about his father God. In verse 27, he said, with men this is impossible, but not with God. Listen carefully, let me tell you. When Jesus stepped into a case, Whatever that is shapeless will begin to have a shape. Point number one, when Jesus steps into your case, we have already read, when Jesus steps into your case, if there was death, he would change death into life. He did it in the case of Lazarus. He did it in the case of this woman of Nain. And he also did something like that, as we're going to see very soon. In Mark chapter 5. We don't have all the time. Mark chapter 5. When Jesus steps into a case, any level of sickness, any level of sickness, any level of sickness, when Jesus steps into a case, any level of sickness, any level of sickness, listen to me, any type of sickness, when Jesus steps into a case, any type, any type of sickness, 
becomes a story. And in Mark chapter 5, verse 21. And when Jesus was passed over again by sheep onto the other side, most people gathered unto him, and he was near unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus, by name. And when he was, then when he saw him, he fell at his feet just like I demonstrated before. And you know what this man did? And that's what I wanted to do. And he besought him. He begged him. I will tell you more about that. He besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter, Lying at the point of death, I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her and sh that she may be healed and she shall live. Jesus went with her again. Listen, if we read down, Jesus went. This man came, knelt before Jesus. He besought Jesus. I want you to I want to say something to you as I go. What do you know about Jesus? When you hear about Jesus, what do you hear? Do you hear about the religious Jesus that they talk about in the Bible? Who is no more acting? Who is no more functioning? No. This man saw. A miraculous Jesus. A Jesus who had the power to do all things. Who can do all things? Who can change any story? He didn't need anybody to preach to him for him to know what Jesus can do. He knew already what Jesus can do. All he needed was Jesus' consent. And if you could see, Jesus gave the consent. But we say Jesus wrote and followed him. He came and besought him, said, Master, my little daughter is at the is sick at the point of death. Bro, sister, woman, man, do you have anybody that is at the point of death now? Are you in the hospital yourself? Listen, watching me on the media. Where are you? Which when I say where are you? Which situation are you in? Are you in the situation of this man? Whose daughter, whose strong family member, whose case is at the point of death? Say, come. He didn't say Jesus, come. When you come, you will pray and ask God if God will think, if God will have mercy, if God will change. He say no. Say, come, lay your hand on her that she will live again. He knew that if Jesus comes, if Jesus steps into that case and lays his hand upon the girl, the girl must rise, not we, must rise. That's what Jesus is looking for. That's what he's looking for from you now. When you want him to step into your case, he's looking for something. He's looking for something. He's looking for this he saw in that man. Say, because master, if you come, lay your hand on him, on her, please. Lay your hand on her. She will live again. You know what? If we read down, why Jesus was ministering to the, the woman of issue of blood. You know what happened? Before Jesus could finish ministering to the woman of issue of blood, somebody came and told the, told the man, say, there is no need to stop the master. Yeah, the daughter is dead. Nothing. The case is now impossible. The case is now. The case is now. The case is now doesn't have. It doesn't have any remedy. It is now without remedy. The case is now without remedy. So there is no need. We needed Jesus before. We needed him before. You needed Jesus before. When your daughter was at the point of death, she was sick. We agree. But now, no need is stopping Jesus because the care is dead. Let's not bury her. Jesus had it and said, No, do not listen to them. And I'm talking to you now. Concerning your womb, concerning your person that is sick, concerning your business, 
concerning your marriage, concerning your wife, concerning your husband, concerning your daughter, that your son, concerning whatever that your business. They say no, there's no need to no need to worry. The case is now over. The thing is now finally there. Oh, it looks like I should also even speak to my home nation. The brothers and sisters who are there, who have looked up to the Lord, don't worry. Take Jesus to let wherever you are hearing me. It, concerning the election that had that was held yesterday, and people are doing many things, different governors, different people trying to read the, 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 the electoral empire. Don't worry. Take Jesus to step in. He's a fighter. He knows how to handle the matter. Since yesterday, I've been watching and seeing what different people we are doing, different the the, the island people, the, the talks, different governors of different disgraceful governors, what they are doing. I say, no, Jesus, you have to step in. That I, I, I once I, I say Jesus step in, Nigeria is in your hand. This election is in your hand. It's in your hand. He can see the Jesus I'm talking about, the God I'm talking about was the one that handled Pharaoh. See, hey. I don't know if anybody is listening to me from Nigeria. Let me speak the word of God. Those who are holding Nigeria town, who do not want to leave Nigeria, the God that, that handled Pharaoh and the Egyptians will handle all of you and you will leave Nigeria by force. Those who are holding Nigeria down, say Nigeria will not go. People who want to speak their mind, you are stopping them. The God Pharaoh said Egypt, Israel will not go to their promised land. You don't want the people of Nigeria to go to their promised land. And speak, I'm in Nigeria, I'm not afraid to speak because I'm from Nigeria. This is where I'm living. Those who are holding Nigeria down, who do not want Nigeria to go, the God of Israel, the God of the people of God, who have appeared to the children of Israel in the day of Moses, will come down in Nigeria. If you don't let Nigeria go, he will destroy you and he will, Nigeria will still go by force. That's the word. When Jesus steps into any case, there must be a change. No man is bigger for him. Brethren, don't worry. No one is bigger for God to handle. No one is bigger for Jesus to handle. Nothing, nobody should be afraid of anything. They think they have political power. They think they have money. They think they have position. They think they can do all their magomago. Let's see whether that God is in honor. The Bible says in the Psalm chapter 24, it says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world are they that were there. God is in honor of Nigeria. So when Jesus steps in into a matter, there must be a change. And the change must be positive. Amen. Jesus stepped into the that man's case. He told the man, Jairo said, there's no need to worry yourself. There's no need to worry yourself. I am here. And when Jesus got to the, man, the man's house, Jesus laid him on the girl. He said, Talita come here. The, dead, the girl that was dead rose up. Amen. So point number one, when Jesus steps into a case, a dead case, that case, life, Jesus will bring back life. When he steps into a dead case, he brings back life. Point number one. Point number two, the same Mark. 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 Chapter four. Mark chapter four. The same place. Mark chapter four. If Jesus steps into the from, from verse 35, if Jesus steps into your, a case of storm, if you are in any storm now, if your marriage is in, on, on, going through a storm, if your business is going through a storm, if the nation where you are hearing me is going through a storm, ma, hey, if your, your family is going through a storm, your finances is going through a storm, whatever that you have that is going through a storm, you are a man of God listening to me, you are When he entered my own storm, he still the storm. He will enter your own case and he will steal your own storm in the name of Jesus. When my family was in a storm, Jesus entered into the storm. He walked upon the storm and steal the storm, and the storm was calmed down. 
The enemies were confused. Let's read. For number 20, take one before we pray. And said the same day, when evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent, the, when they had, sorry, when he had sent, they, they uh, sent away the multitude. They took him, even as he was, in the sheep. And there were also with him other little sheep. And there arose a great storm, a great storm of wind and waves. And of winds, please, and waves beat into the sheep so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the sheep, asleep on the pillow. And they awoke him, and they awoke him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that will perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind. And said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. Are you in a great storm? Are you in any kind of great storm around your life? I wouldn't have, as a human, I wouldn't have been able to know the type of storm that you are in. Are you in a kind of a storm? Hearing me, any type of storm. In a, it might not be the storm of the sea, but you might be in a storm that want to eat your business, that want to eat your marriage up, that want to eat your life, that want to eat, that want to swallow your family, that want to swallow you up. Hey, the Bible says that when Jesus, when they are awakening, what you need to do is to awake the Jesus that I'm talking about. How? By calling him, say, Master, I told you at the beginning, call him, say, Jesus, I say to you, please, step into my case. Step into this storm. Come into this storm. Come into this storm. He doesn't fear storm. No. He is the master of winds and waves. I didn't have time to read that. He said, when, when, when he finished coming the storm, they said, what manner of man is this one that even the winds and the waves they obey him? Jesus is the master of every storm. Listen, I did, you didn't hear me. That storm that wants to swallow you, that wants to swallow your marriage, that wants to swallow your family, that wants to swallow your business, that wants to swallow your husband, that wants to swallow your wife. I mean, the storm of your health that wants to swallow you. That storm, Jesus is the master of that storm. Let me repeat. I said that storm that wants to swallow you now. Jesus is the master of that storm. Call him. Say, Jesus, Lord Jesus, step into this storm. Call him. Say, Master, step into this storm. Master, step into this storm. Master, they came on. Bible said they came. The disciples went there. They are working. They are working. They, 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 they said, Master, Oh, and the word put it in present tense. They are waking and they say, they didn't know, Bible didn't tell us they said, and they say, it is you now. They, they are waking, they are waking, and they say, you can wake him up now. You can say to him, don't go there and say, this God, is he not seeing what is going, I'm going through? Eh? That's what people are there. Are you not seeing what I'm going through? Are you not seeing? No! Go to him! You are from the day of Adam, God had made it that men would have to call him into their mother before he would come in. Oh, that was why I was so happy when I saw what was happening in my home nation yesterday. I saw my people, they were ready. They were ready. They, they were ready for the God of heaven to help them. Not, not just by mouth. They were ready in action. They came out. They were there. Even in the night, they were there. They came. The woman was stabbed. She still came back to vote. They knew. No, you can't go there, go there, just go there. And say, go there, get angry. Say, God, is he not seeing what I'm going through? Is he not seeing what I'm going through? No. God has many 8 million persons on earth to look at. You have to call him into your matter. You have to call Jesus into your matter. Call him in. Say, Master, Master, step into my storm. Step into my, into this my storm, Master. 
Esther. And you see what he will do. I speak to you in the name of the Lord. Wherever you are now, you are in any type of storm. Any type of storm. Mandoria. And you are ready to him what I said you should do in the name of the Lord. You are saying, Jesus, that this man is talking about. Come and step into this storm. It could be a 25 years of barrenness. Say, Jesus, step into this storm. The storm wants to eat up your marriage. The storm wants to eat your personality. It could be a business problem. It could be a mysterious problem. Your church wants to break into two. People, people, the, the, the enemy have risen up against you. You can see, you can see the death. You can see the trouble. You can see the destruction with your eyes. You are seeing that destruction. You are seeing the storm. And you are saying, this storm can swallow me up if God does not intervene. And you are speaking, say, Jesus, say, step into me, man. This is my storm. If you are saying what I have said now, you are saying, Jesus, say, step into this my storm. I prophesy to you. I speak in the name of the Lord. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, say, let the Lord Jesus step into thy storm. And let the free storm, that great storm now, be in the name of Jesus. Amen. I don't think you know what the storm is. I declare and declare peace. Is it the storm of sickness? Is it the storm of cancer? Is it the storm of, storm of diabetes? Is it, is it the storm of the high, high blood pressure? What is the type of storm? Whichever storm I speak right now, you know, they told you you are in the last stage of that cancer. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are in the last stage of that cancer. Hey, you are in the last stage of that disease. Oh, they, what have they told you? No, 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 what have they told you? No, I speak to that storm now that want to swallow you. You storm now. Be still. In the name of Jesus. You storm. You storm. Be still now. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, that man have called you. That woman have called you to step in. Now, step into that matter now. Step into that marriage. Step into that case. Step into that health. Step, step into that situation. As you are praying right now, as some people already are praying, as you are praying, as you are praying, you are saying, Jesus, come in. Oh, Jesus is stepping in. The Jesus I'm preaching is not the dead Jesus. He's the one that is living. The one that is sitting at the right hand side of the throne of grace right now. They are making intercession for you even. He's stepping in now. Jesus, step in. Jesus, step into that storm. Jesus, step into that storm. Hey, that young lady that has been waiting for you, she's now 40. Oh, she's now 45. I don't know. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. People are already mocking her. Oh, my abaya, the storm wants to swallow her up. Jesus, step into that storm now. Jesus, step into that storm. Jesus, step into that storm. Hey, the storm that the lady is going through. Oh, that woman that has been married for years. Oh, oh, they're thinking about her to remove her. Jesus, step into that storm now. Jesus, step into that storm. Jesus, step into that storm. Jesus, step into the storm of everyone listening to me now. Step into the storm and steal every storm. Come every storm. Come every storm. Come every storm of that family, of that marriage. Come every storm. Jesus, enter now. Jesus, step in. Jesus, Step in, Jesus, step in, Jesus, step into the storm. Jesus, step in now. As they're calling you, as I'm speaking, they're hearing me, they're speaking. Oh, Jesus, step into the storm. Jesus, step into their storm. Hey, Jesus, step into the storm of that nation. Jesus, step into the storm of that community now. Jesus, step into the storm of that family. Jesus, step into their storm. Hey, what they want, somebody want to take it from them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Somebody want to take it from them. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Jesus, step in. Hey, Jesus, step in. You are the battle fighter yourself. You are the battle fighter yourself. You are the ocean divider yourself. Step in right now. What they own, somebody want to take it from them. Jesus, step into that matter of that one now. What they own, somebody want to take it from them because they have power. Oh, because they have money. Because they have position. Jesus, step in. You are the battle fighter. You are the defender of the defenseless. Oh, you are the mother by the restorer of hope to the hopeless. Jesus, step in now. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are the one that lifted no God. You are the lift out the hand through you. Man, do you have that? Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, yeah, but that one that they are holding in the shrine of a native doctor. Jesus, step in now. Jesus, step in. Jesus, step in now. The one that they are holding there. Jesus, step in. Hey, yeah, yeah. That family that they are holding there. That destiny that they are holding there. You are the destiny changer. You are the destiny changer. You are the destiny rescuer. Jesus, step in. You are the story changer. Step in now, Jesus. Step into that matter. Step into that matter. Jesus, step in. Jesus, step in. 
Jesus step in now. And let there be miracles. Let there be testimonies. And the love of peace wants to God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Finally, Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. The book of Mark chapter 10. There was another man who was in a storm. The storm that wanted to destroy him. That's the man. The Bible has not told us the name of today. But the Bible told us that he's the son of a man called Timaeus. So they called him Bad Timaeus. He heard that Jesus was coming. Shuraganda He heard that Jesus was coming. He was coming. He knew he was in a problem. His problem was that he could not see. When I studied this place, I became melted. The Bible said, when he heard about Jesus, he started shouting, Son of David, have mercy on me. Hey, this place melted me so much. Mark chapter 10. I'm at verse 46 right now. And at verse 46. The Bible said, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And when many charged him that he should stop, that he should hold his peace, the Bible said that he, that, that he cried even the more. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus still still commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, be of good cheer. Rise, he called you. And he cast away his garments, right and rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered him and said unto him, Mark this, I'm going to say something about that if I pray. What will thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Mark this one too. Go thy way, your feet have made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Three things are here. When he heard, there was a noise he heard. Just like they heard him this noise. Who is this man of God talking about? Who is he talking about? This man. You may not even be a Christian here, just hear him. You may not be a Christian. Listen to me. You don't need to be a Christian for my Jesus to visit you. Why? Because Jesus is the gift of God to the whole world. Yes. Jesus didn't die for only Christians. For only born again Christians. He died for the whole world. If you can call him now to step into your case, he will step into your case and you will not know that he actually died for you. And I pray after that you surrender your life to him. Like this man followed Jesus after. Bible didn't tell us he, was a, he wasn't a disciple of Jesus. You don't need to be his disciple. But he employed something which I want to teach you right now. When he heard that it was Jesus, he cried for God's mercy. He called unto Jesus for mercy. Mercy is a call that anybody in the whole world, it doesn't matter who, can cry unto God and God will not say no. That's why the Bible said in the book of 1 Kings that their harm became so bad. God told the, the prophet, say, go back and tell her. Have you seen, say, say, my servant, have you seen that even a harm, a harm, could be this sober? Go and tell him that that punishment that I declared will no more happen in his time. It will not happen in the time of his son. If God could show him have mercy, how much more you? A man that Bible says that he was so to evil. Nobody had been so to evil in the land of Israel, the then Israel, that they have. When you call God for mercy, listen to me. I don't know what your case is. As a man, I am a man. Once I see anything that is bigger than me, I cry to God for mercy. The reason is because you don't know the accusation that the enemy is bringing before you. You may not even know the reason why you are going through what you are going through. It could be your mistake. It could be the mistake of your father or mother or your father's. It could be even that of your child. It could be that of your parents. It could be anything. 
And because of what has transpired in the time past, it is not legal for you to go through what they are going through. But when you can get God's mercy, if you can get God's mercy, the attention of God's mercy, oh, do you remember where I read in Luke chapter 11? The Bible says Jesus was moved with compassion. If you can get the heart of Jesus, the heart of God, to move with compassion towards your case, ah, I challenge you, your case must charge. It doesn't matter how many years. That's what happened. That was what happened. When this guy, he, this man called Bartimaeus, he called, he said, Jesus, son of David, show me mercy. I don't know how he became blind. Maybe he even knew how he became blind. You could have been his mistake. You might be in an addition. In that addition, you were the one who brought yourself into the addition. It could also be a problem of your parents. They were the ones who introduced you into that drug, into that unconsciousness. It could be your friend. You started and today now you are addicted. You can you are now in a helpless situation. Like Patimius. I don't know your case, but I'm talking when Jesus steps into any man's case, who is in a helpless situation? Like Bartimaeus. He couldn't help himself because he was blind in his two eyes. He couldn't help himself. He couldn't even see Jesus. He just had his sound. But because he called Jesus, he cried for Jesus, cried to Jesus for his mercy. Why did he stop? I don't have all the time. Why did he, Jesus stop? Because Jesus had mercy. As soon as Jesus had that word, mercy, have mercy on me, have mercy. Bible says he stood, Jesus stood still. The cry, the call that Jesus will not say no to, that God will not say no to, the God I'm preaching, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Jesus I'm talking about is the call of mercy. Once you call mercy, he will stand still for you. Can you call him now? Step into my case and have mercy on me. Second point is that. When he came, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? I'm repeating it again. Don't get angry with God. Say, God, are you not seeing my matter? Did you remember that when they wanted to stop that man at the place I read, he didn't stop? That you prayed the first one, something didn't happen. Or this other man of God prayed for you, something didn't happen. Oh, because of that, you can't believe God again. No. 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 Call him until he stops. Stand still for you. Tell him to step in right now. And he's going to step in. And the third one, Jesus asked him, said, Jesus, right, second, Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus knew he was blind. Yet Jesus asked him. Jesus knows your case. Yet he still asked. He's asking you, what do you want me to do? As you have called him to step into your case, he's asking you now. Tell him what he wants you, what, what he wants him to do for you. And finally, do you know what? Jesus told him, but since you have believed, Start seeing. Jesus didn't pray for him. He said, since you have believed, let it be so unto you according to your faith. Go. Your faith has made you. Go. Start seeing. The Bible says he started seeing immediately. Do you not see what I said? Whether I pray for you or not, the miracle will still take place. If you can call Jesus in now, if you can have, call him for mercy, and if you can have faith, it will happen. Close your eyes. Say, Jesus, come in. I'm closing right now. Say, Jesus, come in. Jesus, step into my case. Jesus, I call you to show me mercy. Jesus, I call you right now. I believe. Oh, I said, I, Jesus, I believe. I believe. And I can see. The man already believed that if Jesus speaks, that he can see. He already believed. Do you believe that that dead man can rise? That your situation can change? Believe it now. Jesus said in Mark chapter, in Mark chapter 9, 23, he said, all things are possible to him that believe. I pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, everyone who is inviting your son, Jesus Christ, you know them right now, into their lives. If asking you to step into their case, into their matters, into their nation, into their community, into their family matter, into their court case, into their finances, into their business. Jesus, step in and give them a miracle right now. No waste of time. Give them a miracle that your name will be glorified. Thank you, Father, because it is done. Oh, Jesus, precious name, you have prayed. Amen. I bless you today. Unto God's precious hand of mercy, I commit you. Wherever you are listening to me from, the, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you. Grant you all the peace that passes from understanding. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you.
Amen with you. Anoint yourself now. 